Mr. Chairman, this amendment recognizes that our Republican colleagues are much better at naming bills than what they put in the bills. And so it leaves the name of the bill, but it strikes the remainder. Uh, as such, it will do for creating jobs exactly what the bill as introduced does, which is absolutely nothing, but it will save substantial paper. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this underlying bill is really the big shift bill. Uh, it shifts from the Republican position uh, in December, a position that uh, I strongly opposed, uh, that uh, in return for two years of tax relief for billionaires, the long-term unemployed would receive relief for a year, and now after five months, uh, they've decided uh, we'll take care of the billionaires, but uh, we don't care so much about the unemployed. It also has as its underlying theme the shiftless unemployed, that we will shift this uh, money that has been allocated to deal with the needs of the long-term unemployed from the shiftless unemployed to the states uh, who have failed to manage their own budgets and plan for the future, that that's a better use of the money. Well, I think that in discussions of both Democrats and Republicans today, our eyes sometimes tend to gloss over when we talk about four million long-term unemployed who are affected. We talk about three point, or $31 billion, again, to get the number correct, of money. Let me talk about one individual that has been impacted uh, by uh, the long-term, uh, the extended unemployment benefits. And I set the stage for you, not in Michigan or Ohio that have had such high unemployment, but in Austin, Texas, which is one of the best areas in the country. In fact, Austin was identified, I think, by one uh, private source as the community that had come out of the recession the best of any place in the country, and its unemployment rate uh, last month was a little over 6%. I'm speaking specifically of Ann Danish. Ann is 57 years old, and until uh, a short time ago, she was the vice president for operations of an Austin company. It borrowed too much, and when the economy tanked, her company tanked too. It closed its door, and 88 people in the Austin area were without any job. She contacted our office uh, to learn how she, what she could do about unemployment, and we explained to her what the benefits were. She says, the benefits kept my home together and kept me together. Without these benefits, a difficult situation would have become a disastrous situation. During the time that she has received extended unemployment benefits, Ann has applied in one of the best economies in the country for 118 jobs, including jobs in the retail and other professions from that which she worked. She has gotten exactly three interviews out of those 118 job applications. Two of those, uh, the employers told her she was overqualified and she has not been able to find other employment. We are talking about real life human beings and the stories of these families. The extended unemployment benefits cannot take care of all their problems, but we can help a little those Americans who through no fault of their own uh, have found themselves in a desperate situation. And there are a number of those out there. Now, one aspect that has not been discussed about this bill today is what it does not do. We know it doesn't do anything about creating jobs. But over the last 30 years, we have had a bipartisan commitment uh, to extend the Federal Unemployment Tax Act uh, to assure that we have the monies to keep our unemployment uh, system working. Next month, that act will expire. There will be no more monies coming from it. It is quite clear that our Republican colleagues in this bill and in none other uh, don't plan to extend it. Instead, their approach to federal unemployment insurance, as our chairman has indicated, is essentially the same as the approach to Medicare. Let it wither on the vine. Let the financial underpinnings of the employment system, which have been in place through Republican and Democratic administrations since 1976, let those expire. When you combine that with what they're doing in ending the guarantee with this opt-out system, one can understand why our teachers, many of whom in a state with a cruel budget as Texas has, with cl schools closing and teachers being terminated, will be facing the unemployment lines 
wrote to the committee and I would ask to make it a part of the record uh, through the National Education Association that uh, this bill uh, really poses a serious problem uh, for those who are teachers uh, who have uh, will now see these unemployment benefits no longer available in a, and that in a fragile economy, as several people have pointed out, uh, we're also removing one of the most effective forms of stimulus. For that reason, I urge adoption of the amendment to leave the name but strip the remainder. Without objection, 